Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Joe Gauck. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Cutting Edge Lasers, and I'll be your moderator this evening. Tonight's Cutting Edge Campus webinar is a continuation of Rem Jackson's Part 1 live event on Tuesday, May 19th. If you weren't able to join us for Part 1, don't worry. We'll review some of Rem's remarks during tonight's presentation. But afterwards, if you'd like to view the on-demand recording of Part 1, it is available at the Cutting Edge Knowledge Center on our website. Our guest speakers tonight include Rem Jackson of Top Practices, Dr. Melissa Lockwood of Heartland Foot and Ankle Associates in Illinois, and Dr. Kevin Mullen of Carmel Foot Specialists in North Carolina. After we hear from our speakers, we'll have a Q&A session. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please submit them to the moderator in your GoToWebinar taskbar. Finally, a PDF version of tonight's presentation and a link to the recording will be sent to all attendees. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Rem Jackson. Thank you, Joe. Um, and it's a, a delight to be back again for part two. I do wanna say that there will be a tiny bit of review um, about the three points of leverage tonight, but not very much uh, because we're really gonna get in uh, into the how to. So if you're on with us last time, it's the, the what is, and I strongly recommend you review uh, part one. Uh, now we're going to talk about, uh, really, uh, we have two, invited two excellent practitioners to join us tonight who are, I think, exemplars of really utilizing these three points of leverage in their business, um, in their podiatry businesses, their practices. And they're going to share with you how, you know, just some, just some insights in how they're able to do what they're able to do. And remember, the three points of leverage are designed to help you grow your practice so that it's as strong and profitable and healthy as it can be without taking your, your headaches um, and increasing those as well. Uh, and so Dr. Melissa Lockwood, again from uh, Bloomington, Illinois, is uh, uh, one of our presenters tonight. She is the reigning Top Practices Marketer of the Year and uh, is fun for me to watch in her career because she's so uh, she has such a bias towards action. She's so proactive and really has a lot to share. Um, and she's in a, uh, a practice, uh, one office practice with, uh, with one other practitioner. Our other doctor tonight is Dr. Kevin Molam, who has been in practice longer. He and I are the exact same age, and he's been in practice longer than Melissa, has a, a much more mature multi-doctor, multi-office practice, um, and however, has been instrumental. In fact, was the original, uh, was the original thinker uh, that came up with innovator about the third point of leverage, which is how much dollars per hour does your practice generate, and has worked with us in trying to research this, and I again think has more than just about anybody I know to share about how they achieve some remarkable numbers, um, which correlate really well to how they, uh, how they actually uh, treat, serve their patients so that their results are as high as possible. So welcome to Melissa and welcome to Kevin. Thanks for joining me on this Cutting Edge Laser series. Next slide, please. Uh, I do wanna say that, uh, you know, again, every adversity, every failure, every heartache cares with it, carries with it, the seed of an equal or greater benefit. This is a great quote from the incredible Napoleon Hill. And uh, I think, you know, when we look at what we're facing right now with the current COVID-19 crisis, uh, as I had said before, and I will say again, that it's really, you can look to the darkness, or which is truly there, or you can look to the light. Um, and when you look to the light, then you find the silver linings. If you would uh, go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, for me, Joe. And again, there's the darkness. We all know it exists. It's impossible to escape. But if you, next slide, think about it and you look at the possibilities for you in the future, there's always a silver linings across all of this. And so the next slide, Joe, if you would, is um, this statement that I want to start with tonight, and that is everything. Everything is mindset. How you look at the situation and your ability to adapt, your abil ability to work, 
your ability to take your God-given gifts, everything is determined by your mindset. We all have the same set of circumstances. So I want to ask first, Kevin, if I could, um, Dr. Molan, I'm just going to use your first names. I'm so familiar with both of you that I wanted to ask you if, if you would just share just in, just a little bit about your thoughts about how essential your mindset is in your career and your life. And Kevin, we'll go with you first. Well, um, just to think of how you want to practice, what you want to do, how you want your life to be lived, um, both in your practice and in your private life and your family life. Um, if you set that mindset to where you want to go, you have a perfect beacon of where you need to continue to strive to get to versus just aimlessly wandering around in your practice and in your family life. So when I started getting into the top practices mindset, you know, I set a direction, set a course, set goals, and worked them endlessly until I achieved where I wanted to be. Well, thanks, Kevin. Melissa, how about you? Um, so I, I agree with Kevin on every point. I think that, you know, especially in times of, of suffering, in times of concern, even now we have we have too much time on our hands in some cases because we haven't had um, the same type of perhaps volume um, or, you know, lack of busyness in our practices. And this is happening to everybody in every industry. It's just super important to keep um, engaged by, you know, attending conferences like this, um, participating, listening to things, um, you know, immersing yourself, whether it's through podcasts or reading or doing something every single day to reaffirm why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, you can get kind of wallowy and, and stuck in an abyss. So it's just really important to make sure that you constantly are, are immersing yourself in that. I, I, I go so far as I, on my daily calendar, I write down the three or four things that I do to make sure I stay in a positive mindset because I will find myself falling off that wagon. Oh, it's so easy. You know, the Indigo Girls have that song and they say that, you know, darkness has a hunger that's insatiable, but lightness has a call that's hard to hear. And you have to think about it, work towards it and build it. But I think Henry Ford said, um, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. And so absolutely perfect. Uh, Joe, we'll go to the next slide. Um, the, the thing I wanted to just re, re, um, reaffirm with everybody is the three points of leverage. So they are as follows. The quality and the number of patients that are in your practice every single day. What your per visit revenue is, and we defined that very clearly in the last webinar, but I will say again, you take a particular period of time. In this case, you're going to hear uh, the, uh, the per visit revenue of these two uh, doctors uh, for 2019 and 2020 year to date. Um, and that per visit revenue, you simply divide the number, your, your total collections divided by your total number of patient visits. On the average, in the country, it's $95. It can go up to 230, 235, or even higher if you are really running your practice well. And the last um, is how many dollars per hour does your practice generate when you're in clinic? Not when you're at the office or that you're open, but when you're in clinic. And we're gonna really address those next slide uh, as we go forward. So let's first talk about this new patient number. As I've said, uh, it all depends. You know, the, each of these doctors is gonna share the number of the patients that they're seeing right now. Um, Kevin really, uh, is one of the doctors I know that can handle high volume and likes high volume. Uh, Melissa is, is definitely looks at hers in a different way. And um, while she's you know doing a lot of volume, it's not um, the, in, in the kinds of numbers that Kevin is you know prefers to do. So everybody's different. Um, the sweet spot um, I've seen is right around 32 patients a day, and you want 20% of those to be new patients. So next slide, please. What I want to do is ask um, these doctors, and I, I just used as an example here, this is um, uh, Melissa's website, Heartland Foot and Ankle, um, HFAA.com. And uh, Melissa is uh, uh, really an outstanding marketer. As I said, she's the reigning marketer 
uh, of the year uh, for top practices right now. But Melissa, I want to start with you. Can you speak to like the, 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 the vital importance of marketing now and share one of your you know, top two tips? Sure. So um, one of the things when we have conferences and, and meetings like this in the evenings is that you you may actually hear part of our the reason why we do everything that we do, which are my two children. So we're trying to keep them as quiet as we can. However, um, it is seven o'clock at night at our house. So anyway, um, so no worries, no worries at all. <laughs> um, so marketing right now, and first of all, I will say our practice is the, the current top practices marketing uh, practice of the year because it's not just me. Um, in fact, uh, I would say that I'm probably about 10% of the the approval of things, and it's mostly the ideas of of our team itself. Um, but I think during during this situation, so we're we're really talking about how can we take these three points of leverage, and and marketing is such a vital aspect of all three of them. But getting ahead with your message, whether it's and we've got a whole gamut of things, but the two big points are whatever that message is, you want to stay ahead. And on, and on that leading curve of the conversation, and I'll give an example when it comes to COVID. And then the second thing would be, with your message, you want to have a lot of consistency with it. So uh, the one thing I've learned in marketing, um, and I've been in practice 12 years now, is that it's constantly evolving. Like every time you think you may have figured one thing out that's working for you, let's say you're going out to referring offices every week and giving them M&Ms, <laughs> um, you can't do that anymore. So you have to make sure that you're constantly being creative about how you can continue to communicate. Uh, my COVID example, because um, I think Rem did a screenshot of, of our site right now, um, you just really you want to stay abreast and not ignore what's happening out there. Because as a business owner, uh, you need to make sure that you are um, for, on brand with the, the global message of we're all in this together. And you can do it in a variety of ways, whether it's through um, email communication, social media communications with them, video communications. Um, we've even done a series of home exercise tips for them while they're working from home, trying to deal with family from home, like just trying to really um, empathize with our with our client and our patient base throughout this. And we've seen a huge response from that. Like our patients are open rates for these specific types of emails. They want to know what we are doing to protect them because the only way they're going to come back into the office and feel safe is if they actually there's there's one of my kids <laughs> if they actually uh, if they actually know what you're doing so if you're not telling them what you're doing you need to um and then my only other tip would be you know as you're looking at ways to potentially expand your marketing or even rehone it this is the perfect time to do so you want to make sure that you're uh, really looking at who you want to see who is that ideal patient and make sure you're marketing to them well thank you and kevin you've been I mean, you've embraced marketing, um, you know, quite a long time ago, and then you just slowly ramped it up and then became really good at marketing. So what would you say is the, the vital importance of marketing now? And, you know, what are one or two of your top tips? Um, what we focused in during this um, lockdown situation is to keep our referring physicians and all the areas like our um, running shoe stores, primary doctors, our um, urgent cares, just to tell them that we're still open, uh, we're, we're still doing business, we're protecting our patients, because those referral sources are so vital um, to keep us going. Um, they're the lifeblood of our practice. We did a lot of heavy shoe leather marketing, which ended immediately, but it really didn't end. We just you know, sent them information on a regular basis. And then, you know, working the list. You know, we have lists of people that still need our help, so we continue to send them information consistently, you know, through our email systems just to keep them abreast of where we are, that we're still open. You know, if you still need us, we're here and we'll protect you, so on and so on. So it's been actually, I've worked every day. I didn't take any days off this whole um pandemic and most of other doctors that i've talked to were just they said we were just down to you know 10 20 percent of our patient load and we just cut back to about 50 to 65 percent so that we could keep social distancing but we could have done more 
and it was it was kind of nice to see that. That's great. You know, I had a doctor reach out to me today and say, Rem, you know, I want to know your opinion about this. Um, I, um, you know, have been thinking about, you know, I mean, we were slow and I, so I've gone back and I've recalled our diabetic patients, people that maybe haven't seen us in four years. I've even recalled um, uh, folks for their orthotics. And, you know, and do you think, is that okay? Is that appropriate? And, um, you know, and I, my one thought was, Right now, <laughs> pretty much everywhere, though this is now beginning to change, the only activities that people can do are walk, hike, run, or walk around their house with no shoes on. And so they absolutely need our help, your help to you know, stay healthy during this time when they're injuring themselves um, and, and all the rest of that. So uh, next slide, Joe. Uh, so marketing, staying connected is, is absolutely vital. Let's talk about per visit revenue for a moment. So that's, as I said before, it's, and now we're going to move into another area where these two doctors are really exemplars um, in podiatry. Uh, so uh, total collections divided by total number of patients visits. The national average is $95. You need to make that calculation for yourself and find out where you are. The higher end of this, I've always said, is around $230 to $250. So next slide, please. So now we're going to show you some real numbers um, from real practitioners. And I'm, this is uh, uh, Melissa Lockwood's practice. Um, HFAA stands for Heartland Foot and Ankle. That's what she calls her practice. And so uh, we're going to look at her um, uh, her volume, and um, she's going to tell us basically about this and then their per visit revenue. Um, and uh, Melissa, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, so um, I, I know this slide's a little, a little bit wordy, but let's just break it down. Before I was seeing um, about between 65 and 70 patients a week. So this is ending probably early to mid March. And my associate doctor was seeing between 35 and 40 because he was still building up his aspect of the practice. So then afterwards, and like our low dipping point was probably the middle of April. We kind of went down to about 50% of what we would normally have done, but that was really just for about a week, week and a half. Um, I'm now at about 55 to 60 a week, and um, Dr. Rizvi's down to just about 30 to 35. So he, we're back to about 90% of that volume um, for the month of May. When you collectively put those two things together, they actually, we're, we're probably sitting at about that 90, 85, 90%. But the, the most important thing that we've noticed and we're really happy about is we're not seeing the same volume. Hi, James. We're not seeing the same volume of new patients, but we are getting what we're calling OFPs or new initial problems for things for our established patients because we've marketed to them. They know it's safe to come into our office and they are they're coming in for different problems. So huge spike in orthotics. Um, we have been taking time to ask for that. We purposely, because we had more time on our hands, every single patient was getting an orthotics verification, even if they were coming in for an ingrown toenail, because we asked them, hey, you're working from home. Do your feet hurt? And yes, or hey, you're working from home. Um, you know, we're really, uh, when it comes to promoting things like our MLS laser, I don't want to be prescribing any anti-inflammatories or steroids to my patients at this point. So we're, we're laser, it was already first line of defense, of offense, but now the patients are mo even more so apt to getting these treatments, these series of treatments, because A, they can get out of the house and come see us, and B, uh, because they want to feel better right away, and they want it to be as little invasive as possible, and they want to decrease their risk of any kind of like immunodeficiencies with related to COVID. Great. So let's move on to the next slide. And as you say, your reception room is closed, right? So you're doing everything. In fact, just tell everybody what your plans are permanently for your reception room. So we were we were so fortunate with our practice that we we were already running on time because of protocols and systems that we have in place. And, and the waiting room, the reception room was really just a, a, a place for people to socialize and get their coffee and their snacks before they went back. And we're still offering those. We're just doing it in the treatment room and we're sanitizing them in like single packs of things. But the the reception room, we're gonna turn it into probably two treatment rooms, I think is the, the initial plan for it. Um, or even perhaps a holding room, we're discovering that we do have a couple of, of patients, enough volume of patient that we might have to have it um, like a little mini private uh, waiting room for people that are waiting for a bus or something when they go to leave. 
Um, we only have one point of entry into our office. So we're being very careful about how people are um, entering and exiting and that there's not any interaction amongst patients between themselves. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's dig into this because this tells a story. Go ahead. It does. Um, so, uh, you know, it, everyone talks about, um, you know, you, you be so, you just have to be so thankful for who you have on your team. And um, our practice is PVR, and this is prior to March 17th when our state shut down. Um, the practice itself was at 2.15, I was at about 2.30, and Dr. Rizvi was at 2.05. So we've increased, I've gone up about $5. So we're a little competitive, he and I. Um, the practice has gone up $5, but the reason it did is, oh, I'm sorry, we've gone up $20 is because Dr. Rizvi has gone up per patient. He has gone up $30 per patient for every visit. And it's really just about looking at those numbers. And, you know, he, we, we sat down at the end of March and we really talked about it. it so let me back up. When you have an associate doctor and, you know, you're obviously, you know, especially in March, you're thinking, well, how, what am I going to do? Like, th this is somebody that's, you know, producing, like, do we, do we furlough the staff? Do we not furlough? Like, that's a whole nother discussion, but <clears throat> open communications with everybody, including your staff members and your associates are huge in this crisis because he is, he's killing it. And it's really just a matter of, I sat him down and I said, here's how I think we can fix this. Um, we're not gonna have the volume. So the first point of leverage, we're not, I mean, the month of April, we didn't see the same volume we did in April of last year or even in March of this year. Um, May has improved, but we're still not back where we were, but our revenues haven't decreased dramatically because we've been treating even more comprehensively. We were already at a high level, but he is just really, um, you know, he comes in super early in the mornings and just checks every single patient. He's asking the right questions. Um, we're engaging the staff, um, really incentivizing them to make sure that we're taking our time with our patients. So um, I actually really like this new schedule. I like this social distancing schedule. So. Well, and it's one of those things that can just continue on because, you know, and it, a lot of times people just think, well, we've got to get everybody here on the schedule. But when, I mean, you know, if, if you realize that you can be as profitable or more profitable and do better as a business on lower volume, because you have the lower volume, you can be a bit choosier about exactly the, the kind of patient mix that you're just going to be able to put into the practice. Um, and so to me, this is just a brilliant thing. And Kevin, I wanted to ask you, we don't have your PVR numbers. I, I know you're in a, a you're, you're doing a lot of work there and you may have them right there now. I don't know, but, um, but just the essential importance of looking at this. I mean, you are, I mean, you're one of the original people that said, you know, okay, my PVR is high. My practices isn't, we're going to get to that. And you were happy about it because that really translates into this dollars per hour. But, you know, what are your thoughts? Um, about the importance um, of using this time in the way, I think your volume's down as well. And um, and yet you're doing fantastic. So Kevin, I'll turn that over to you. Yeah, my volume's down to my normal patient load per day is anywhere between 45 and 50 patients. So we're down, like today it was um, 35 patients and yesterday it was 40 patients. So we're starting to ramp it back up. But through the whole COVID situation that we were in, I was cutting it down to between 20 and 25 just for social distancing. But as we are starting to open up here in North Carolina, we're just increasing the volume steadily. But it really helped me train my staff better to interview patients differently, to talk to patients differently so that when I come into the room and they're preparing the patient for me, it's set up appropriately. The patients understand what they're, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish with their orthotics or their braces or surgery. Um, so it's making my life easier to come into a better prepped room because my staff has had more time to work with them because I have two new staff, and which is sometimes a struggle uh, with one older staff. Um, so it's actually been a perfect timing and our numbers have actually gone up significantly so when we get back up to full capacity it's going to be one of those um do we go up to full capacity or do i keep it wound down but who knows how that's going to work out because patients 
are somewhat demanding sometimes. They want to come in so you just accommodate. Um, so it's been helpful for our training uh, to keep the staff as trained as possible and up to speed. And it's actually, you know, making me more comprehensive because the higher volume, sometimes you could lose that and just treat what's coming in and move on to the next patient. But it's allowing me to get refocused on the more comprehensive um, aspect of my patients. Beautiful. And that's, I mean, and that's what everybody really wants at the end of the day. Um, better results, um, more comprehensive care, and not to just, you know, work your, your fingers to the bone and be exhausted when you come home. So let's move to the next slide and, and move to the third point of leverage, which is dollars per hour, which is, again, a look at how efficient is the practice? How efficient are you at utilizing your people? Your additional modalities and ancillaries, certainly like the MLS laser of those uh, of the company that's um, putting this webinar on tonight, um, you know, more rooms uh, being utilized, um, you know, uh, or by, um, you know, in, in your practice. And then the schedules for providers, which, of course, Kevin, I got that idea from you because you had, you know, two doctors in an office and then you had, but you had schedules for three providers, which are you know, I'll let you talk about that. So the next slide, please. Um, and just to reiterate, just uh, we did this before, but I just say quickly to give you a sort of a level set. I, this is real data that I have collected uh, personally. So uh, this is, I'm going to show you four doctors that are sort of our avatars. Dr. Average, um, this is dollars per hour. How many hour, how much money is generated every hour they're open and in clinic? Dr. Average, in 2019, collected $643,330, was in the clinic 1,198 hours, uh, and that doctor averaged about $537 an hour. This is the average. This is what most of the doctors that I've surveyed, they're kind of falling in this category. Let's go to the second doctor. Now, I call her Dr. Relaxed and Happy. You might call her Dr. Melissa Lockwood, and uh, so she collected in 2019 732000 $651, she was only in the clinic 761 hours, which again is a lifestyle choice she's making. You heard her talk about the number of patients that she sees. She's, however, generating in 2019, $963 every hour that they're open. Next slide is Dr. Crushing It. You might know him as Dr. Kevin Molan. So he collected by himself $1,217,933, was in his clinic uh, 1,221 hours with his staff, and they were able to generate $989 every hour that they're open. Now, the last doctor, next slide, is Dr. Exhausted and Unhappy, which unfortunately is more common than it needs to be, for certainly than it needs to be. But, you know, it's difficult if you don't know what to do. So this doctor in 2019 collected 349000 went and worked in the clinic, seeing patients 2,036 hours, averaging $172 every hour they're open. That's why this doctor's tired. They're there too much, and they're unhappy because they're barely able to pay their bills in this regard. So how does this happen? Let's move to the next slide, please. Um, and then I want to come back now and get the updates. Um, here we are now. These are current live updated numbers from Dr. Crushing It and Dr. Relaxed and Happy. So Kevin, why don't you kind of jump in on this? I mean, you took the 989, which I thought was fantastic, and you destroyed it. So first of all, let's talk about what's going on there. And people just have one question for you, sir, and that is, how are you doing this? So Kevin, the floor is yours. Um, well, my biggest thing is um, I like to tell everyone is doctor pay um, for doctor work. I do nothing that is not doctor related. Um, I like to delegate as much of my work out to my staff, um, and that includes the verticals uh, or the ancillary services. I won't purchase an ancillary service unless the staff could run it because my time is spent with the patients and then I refer them to the MLS laser. And we have one patient, uh, one staff member that runs the MLS laser and she's there Monday through Friday. Friday's a half a day. Monday through Thursday is a full day from 7.30 to 4 o'clock to 4.30. And we see three patients an hour doing MLS lasers. So as long as I could feed patients to her, my per hour goes up 
and I'm not doing anything. And then same with our toenail laser and the same with the shockwave machine. So I keep referring patients to these ancillary services that I'm not even working. And then my standard patient load, which you've heard before, is, is up there pretty well. Um, so I could leverage that volume and then refer to other ancillary services, and then you could get these higher numbers and not be totally stressed out. This is why we talk about it's how you use your people, how you use your treatment rooms, and how you use your additional ancillary and preferably cash modalities. But Kevin, you're literally saying that in March of 2020, you your dollars per hour was 1624 and in April, which is the worst month most people have experienced possibly in their lives, you and your staff are generating $1,879 an hour. Is that right? Yes. It was crazy. Wow. That's all the numbers. I didn't believe it, but it's, you know, as I said, more comprehensive care referring to the ancillary services and, you know, patients were coming in and it wasn't the fluff patients. You know, we, I saw zero um, routine foot care or trimming toenails and calluses, but Everyone was coming in with heel pain, stress fractures, Achilles tendonitis, all that use the shockwave and all that use the uh, MLS. So you're, you're treating them and referring them right to these services that you know are helping them. They love it. Um, and we're just able to increase the numbers more than we did before. So I'm using my staff better, training them better. I think I had that little extra you know, two months of training with them, which really, if it wasn't for the staff, I couldn't do anything what I do. It's it's the training, and that's what, you know, Rem, you drilled into me as well as Peter wished, that you have to train your staff over and over and over and over, and, you know, that gave me the opportunity, and once we did that, the staff just drove these numbers up with me. Well, I'm impressed. I mean, I, and, I mean, I'm impressed, and I even know what's going on here, so, Congratulations on that. And let's go to the next slide because Melissa, Dr. Relaxed and Happy, is also reporting some um, excellent numbers. So let's go back in that 2019 and then we're going to show what happened in 2020 year to date. So, Melissa, take it away. Whoops, so, back up. Wait, wait, okay. Back up one slide. Thank you. That was just a review. So, 2019 was the average for the practice was 562. Um, the reason, and it was just from how many hours both of us were in clinics. So that's all it is. That's 2019. We'll talk 2020. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so this is year to date. So this is, I didn't actually do March and April, but I kind of want to, I want to see what the three look like, but, um, so the practice itself, we're averaging $789 per hour that we are open in clinic. Um, I, I've, I've increased it about $200. So I haven't done quite as good as Kevin. So now, you know, I'm competitive. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, I know. As soon as you saw that, I thought, oh, she's going to hate that. She's no, going, no, 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 you no. know, I mean, love it. But like, and, okay, now I got a bar. I see where the bar is now. So go yeah, ahead. Yes. Yeah, cause, Kevin, Kev, cause Kevin's my bar. Kevin, like, that's what I need to do. I'm like, I got over a thousand, Kevin. Um, so, yeah. and, Dr., and then again, Dr. Risby has increased to 647. And, and, you know, it's part of this actually is a little bit of an arbitrary thing because dollars per hour directly relates to how much you are in clinic. So in Kevin's case, um, he was still able to still be in clinic 32 hours a week, which is actually fantastic. To have those numbers at 32 hours a week is amazing. I didn't really decrease my schedule at all. We just shifted it a little bit. I'm on average in clinic between 12 and 14 hours a week. My partner, Dr. Risby, is in clinic anywhere from um, 14 to 18 hours a week, and it and, and he also, he had a baby. Well, his wife had a baby <laughs> this month, so he took just a couple of days off. I could have taken more, um, but we did we did the exact same thing. Like the, the where these numbers come from are threefold. One, the fact that like immediately, like I'm talking March 8th. If I go back and look at when I wrote this document, I wrote a COVID. I wrote coronavirus projects of like things that needed to happen because I knew we were going to have this downturn in capacity. Um, you know, things like we completely re redid and had everybody read and sign off on our procedures and protocols manual, our HR manual. Um, we went through and we did, even in March, we went through and recalled 
all patients that had orthotics from the last three years saying, hey, you're gonna be working from home, let us know if we can help, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, the communications that we had with the general patient base um, helped increase this number. Um, and then we also uh, did a very special thing trying to help our community out. We So our community, we found out that the state was gonna be shutting everything down on March 13th. Our statements usually go out for patients once a month on the 15th, which would be the following Monday, like Sunday, Monday. So we made a decision that we were gonna send out statements with um, a letter to our patients, letting them know what we were planning on doing. We figured that was a good way for us to communicate with them. But not only that, we told them that if they could pay their balance with us, that we would write off half of their balances. Now, this was all before you know things like the PPP and the CARES Act got passed and things like that. We were trying to just be as creative as we could be when it comes to income so part of our numbers increasing really came down to we got a lot of income from our patients due to these creative ways i mean we're doing curbside pickup we're doing free local delivery for products um shipping is only five dollars we open the online store so there's so many things that go into these numbers increasing that i wouldn't have even considered three months ago great I mean, tremendous. C congratulations on those numbers. Let's go to the next slide. But um, both of you guys, um, you know, in the midst of all of this, you just you take this to heart. And that's what we're talking about here. Maximum efficiency is our goal. That's the whole point of these three points of leverage and the and the and the understanding of the processes that you go through to achieve that. If you just look at those three numbers and you care about those numbers and you just make those numbers happen, you have to do so many things well to make it happen that you end up, um, it, you just, but you, it helps you stay focused. And then you don't have to think about the million things you got to do. I just got to look at my three numbers. Maximum efficiency, how much you generate per hour. You get that with a reception room or the equivalent thereof these days filled with your perfect patients in the numbers that you want including new patients, and A-team staff delivered to train, deli trained to deliver care efficiently. You utilize your space and your time to deliver as much care as possible. And remember, bigger isn't better. Bigger is bigger. Better is better. So next slide, please. Uh, I just want to say that when you're listening to this conversation, you know, um, think about these challenges that you have in front of you. Um, all of us have these obstacles. We go under them, through them, around them, or we build another road because next slide, on the other side of these obstacles is the new day. It is, I mean, listen, folks, in the middle of all this, in the darkest, darkest moments, one of the things that we, we just knew was going to happen was this pent up demand would be there. And, you know, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are currently, we have the, we have the highest unemployment rate in the United States. Um, because our major, we have one industry here. We have, we're a one horse town. It's a heck of a horse, but it's one horse. And so, you know, we're at 33% and, um, but the casinos are opening up um, on June 4th and we'll see, um, you know, what that does to those numbers as these very large employers come on, come through. But for all of us in any challenge you've ever faced, as you, as you understand that there's a silver lining here, there's a, there's a seed of an equivalent benefit this is where you end up going. And next slide, please. And I just want to say, you know, spending the time on the phone tonight with us and this webinar is a lot like living in top practices and, um, and where we are. So I just want to share with you again uh, that, you know, you can come to our website. There's an enormous amount of resources there. You can find out more. Next slide, please, about what we do. Um, there's a couple of other things I want to just let you know. We are having a meeting in Las Vegas, downtown Las Vegas. Just spoke to the facility today about all their cleaning and, and all the stuff we're going to do. Very small mastermind meeting for only 20 offices. It'll be very limited in size. You can find out more on our website about attending that July 31st and August 1st. And we are going to be in Denver, Colorado on October 16, 17, and 18 for the Top Practices Summit. And I can tell you that um, one of our Friends and Partners is Cutting Edge Lasers. They will be there um, at that summit as they've been to the last, I think, at least five of them. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, great to have companies like that there with us. Next slide, please. Just a couple of other resources that you need to know. When you come to the website, you can download these free eBooks. Um, one's written by me. One's written by Dr. Wishney about 
Uh, the, the running a successful practice should be a dream, not a nightmare. Next slide. Um, and you can also go to uh, uh, Amazon um, and you can get a copy of my book, Podiatry Prosperity, pardon me, and um, Peter's brand new book, The Podiatry Business Solution, um, which he and I just realized that together they are the ultimate podiatry success kit. So show up on Amazon. And, and by the way, when you get them, if you like these books, do us a favor and leave us a five-star review. I would be remiss if I didn't ask for that because after all, I'm in marketing. Next slide, please. So the thing about all of this is, oh, and one last uh, resource for you that you just would probably really enjoy. This has got nothing to do with podiatry, nothing to do with management, and everything to do with you um, and prosperity. Um, it's a podcast I've started where I interview some of the leading lights in podiatry. But I mean, I just got off the phone with a friend of mine who's a New York Times bestselling author of The Blue Zones. His name's Dan Butner and many other people. And their looks at what is prosperity. This is if you want to start your day or you want to take your run or drive and you just want to get a little a boost um, and, and some insight into why what prosperous living is, please check out the podcast anywhere you get your podcast. Next slide. Uh, and so I want to thank again um, um, our sponsors tonight that, uh, that invited us onto this webinar. As I said before, I, I shared this quote last time, but um, apparently I'm the person that has said this. Money doesn't make you happy, but being happy can make you an awful lot of money. And um, I tried to find out who said that, and it turns out, I guess, it was me. So next slide, uh, please. Uh, the question that you have to think about now is what do you want? Uh, you know, the doctors here shared with you the importance of thinking right and mindset and collaboration and working with other people um, and focusing on very specific things that make you successful. But what do you want? And I wanted to ask um, both Kevin and Melissa, I'll start with you, Kevin, um, just your final thoughts and summing up, uh, you know, this topic tonight. And thank you so much for doing this. Um, but, you know, what are you, what's your sort of your final thoughts and parting advice for everybody tonight, Kevin? I, I, right now, I would sit there when you have some time, since you have a little bit more time than usual, to sit down and set your goals and write them down. Um, you're a big fan of that, Rem. You taught me that over and over and over. You have to write down your goals. If you don't write them down, they're, they're not there. So you write down your goals, and then you set your priorities, and you accomplish your goals. And then you write down another goal, and then you accomplish your goal. And then you become successful. It, it's very simple. Well, and you know, Kevin, I watched your journey. I mean, you were successful when I met you all those years ago, but then you took that, you wrote those goals, and then you achieved success far and above where you had been before. So I watched you as you as you've been on that journey, and it's been fun. Melissa, how about you? Yeah. Oh my, Rem, my right, Rem, remember when we met? With ten ten years ago, I met you, and I was seeing probably. 60 to 65 people a day running ragged, um, collecting probably around $800,000, just wore out totally. I met you at the summer seminar in North Carolina, and I said, mm -hmm. Rem, you need to help me. This is what I'm doing. He goes, well, join up. So I joined up, and then I started the journey, and then my production went up unbelievable, and my patient volume went down. And now I'm trying to work it even lower to get to a point where I'm seeing somewhere around the average 35 people and still keeping my, you know, million, three, million, five, million, eight, whatever I want to go, my goal is for the year intact as opposed to seeing more people and trying to jam my schedule. So you taught me all that and it's just fantastic. I remember that well. We were on the beach um, uh, right there and yeah. that, was a, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, Kevin, very much. Melissa, how about you? So um, it's funny because usually, Rem, when we do presentations like this, you put a slide up that, that I think it's that Eric Hoffer quote of like the, the learners are prepared for that new world and then the knowers are stuck in a world that no longer exists. So my my piece of advice for, for anybody listening, anybody watching this this webinar would be think outside the box. This is a challenge, obviously, for everybody, for all of us, but just this is the time for us to reimagine what things could be like for us. And um, the, I, I, and I, and I don't want to take light in it, but the best part about this crisis, and there's not a lot of good, but this is a good thing, is that 
everyone is going through it. So when I complain to Ram, I'm like, I'm not okay. I'm at home with my, and I love my children, love them, but it's been a lot and it's hard for them. And it's, it's hard for our family and our practice. And he's like, but everybody's going through that. And, you know, everybody's having these same struggles and the same opportunity. We all have that same opportunity. So just be a learner. Don't be a knower and don't, don't limit yourself with the, well, we've never done something like that before. Do it, do something new because it'll, this is going to turn out okay, especially for podiatry. We're already so lucky. We're, for some of our taller patients, we're already six feet away from them when we're treating them. I mean, we, we could be dentists right now. We are, we are just so incredibly blessed that we are in the medical profession. We are essential. We're helping our patients. We're taking care of them and our businesses are all still thriving. I never thought about the the difference in a dentist and a podiatrist until you just pointed that out. And uh, yeah, six feet uh, tall patients, you're already back. That's great. I, what a what a cool little in, what a thought. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks so much. Next slide, please. Listen, everybody, this has been a delight for me. Um, you're going to get another treat with the cutting edge laser uh, program that they're doing in their their knowledge campus. Um, Dr. Peter Wishney, who we've referenced before, who wrote the book. Uh, go buy his book and have read it before you hear Peter. But on Tuesday, June 9th, um, he's gonna talk about um, really how to um, implement and sell new practice services. This is something that's very difficult. Uh, you know, doctors aren't natural. Listen, the, the, the word sales is such a, such a bad word. It has so many negative connotations. I just consider a better way to think about this is really high quality communication. If you, in fact, can solve, let's use as an example, the cutting edge laser, solve someone's problems by utilizing the laser and eliminating their pain. And you know that in your heart that it's the right thing to do. You simply have to practice and get good at being able to confidently say, this is what we need to do. Not, well, probably we ought to think about this, whatever, say, listen, you know, I often say, you want to ask somebody, what's this keeping you from doing? If, if with me, um, before I got my really fabulous orthotics, uh, the, that question would have been, I just want to hike on the Appalachian Trail with Diane, who was at the time, my wife, who was uh, getting ready for a big hike with um, uh, teams and team and training that um, did all that for, um, it, was, it was a charitable event that people, you know, a lot of folks were doing at the time. They were having a lot of hiking stuff and she was going to Zion, I think, to do the hike. I just wanted to go with her a little bit and um, and my feet hurt so bad. Um, that I wasn't able to do it. I got my orthotics um, and um, then we hiked the Rocky Mountains. And uh, so the thing is, the question is, what's this keeping you from doing? And I say, well, I, I just want to get on the Appalachian Trail with Diane and make it back. Uh, and you say, okay, you know, in this case, here's how we're going to get you back out on the Appalachian Trail and back. This is what we're going to do. So what's the pain stopping you from doing? This is how we're going to get you back to what you want to do. Remember, Everybody wants to get rid of pain, but um, what they really want to do is they want to go on a vacation and be able to walk on the beach or walk around Epcot Center, wherever they want to be, um, but the pain stopping them from doing it. That's what we talk about, and that's how we help them, and you know you can. So Dr. Wishney is going to spend some really good time with you on that one. Next slide, um, and I just um, encourage you to put that in your calendar now. Um, I want to thank uh, everybody at Cutting Edge. Uh, this has been fun. And um, it's been um, a delight. It's a company that I uh, believe in and want to support. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Joe, and say thanks for the opportunity. I hope to come back sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rem, and I'm sure we'll have you back. We do have time for a few questions, so I, I want to get to a few of those. Um, Dr. Lockwood, this one is directed at you. Could you speak to, since we have, it seems, and I'm pulling a couple of questions together, so bear with me, but since we lack the ability right now to host any live events, what are you doing to educate either current clients or potentially new clients on some of your uh, practices offerings? Um, so we're doing a, a wide array of things, but the most predominant one is um, we're just, we're going crazy with videos. So um, if you go to our website or our YouTube page or our Facebook page, please go to all of those and like them. Um, th th everything is there. I mean, we are, we are doing that web series on what to do at home. We're doing a weekly um, COVID update with either myself or Dr. Rizvi kind of talking about what the practice is doing this week and how things are going, um, giving examples of what we've been seeing things like Dr. Milan discussed with stress fractures and tons of heel pain and 
you know, other injuries and issues. And we're really taking that spin on it of you don't need to go to an urgent care. You don't need to go to the emergency room. You can feel safe coming here. Um, and then we're just trying to make it fun too. So we started doing at the end of 2019, this is well before COVID, but it's been it's been really picking up steam since COVID. Um, we're just trying to keep some light and funny videos. So we're doing these things called RISV Reacts where um, my partner and then my marketing director and my husband, so the three guys in the practice, um, watch nasty videos of foot stuff and they react to it. And they've been some of our most popular videos. Uh, we do some podiatry music parody videos. Uh, so we're just, we're trying to be funny, but also informative at the same time. Um, and then for our referring practices, we've been sending um, faxes and um, snail mail to them, like just kind of letting them know that we're still here and available. And a couple of our top referrers, we've been trying to send them um, a contactless delivery treat every week to really help let them know that we are still there for them. So it's the, the only, the best way to speak to people right now is through the internet. So you have to get on and send the emails, do the videos. Great, thank you, Dr. Lockwood. And, and I'll add to that here at Cutting Edge, we, we've seen the same thing. Not only has that been a trend uh, leaning more to the digital side of things, but as you said, people are almost forced to go that route, uh, kind of with the current climate that we have now. So thank you for that answer. Dr. Mullen, I do have also a question directed at you, uh, and I believe you touched on this a bit prior, but could you tell us what you're doing activity-wise, either yourself or your office staff, to kind of prepare for that rush that we're all expecting once COVID ends? Um, well, ours has been ending um, for the past couple of weeks, um, so we we didn't furlough any staff. We kept all the staff um, on, and we have you know 28 staff members, so it's quite a large amount. Um, we've been making sure we were well stocked with supplies because that's been a limit. You know, we try to not have enough. Um, medical supplies because they're limited, you know. You, then we've been contacting all our primary doctors, have our office managers, all our staff call up the primary doctors and tell them that we're here um, to you know, refer as needed so to keep the stress off of them because why would they want to see an ingrown toenail when they could just easily refer it to us? So we've been just communicating um, through the internet, with our patients and actually phone calls to our primary doctors and the urgent care centers um, just to tell them that we're still around. Great, thank you, Dr. Mullen. Rem, I actually have a question as well directed to you. Uh, it reads, um, as we can tell, it's evident that most businesses are taking a financial hit during COVID. What are some of the key activities you are coaching your clients uh, to do to make up for lost revenue by the end of the year? Well, that's a great question. And so um, one of the things that we're taking a look at is, um, you know, what, what happened? I mean, look, look, it's a reality that in uh, March, um, everybody dropped to 50 to 20 percent to zero. Um, there was, uh, you know, and so March and April and for some of them, part of May, you know, really, really complicated. So we're going back and we're reevaluating the original goals that we had and we are baking into, you know, the 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 the, the amount that we've um, that we're currently behind. But we're not really looking at that um, and dropping it very much. So, you know, whatever your your, I mean, somebody said that the biggest mistake I made was buying a 2020 um, planner because <laughs> that went out the window. Um, so we're we're not doing that. We're not throwing out the 2020 plan. We're simply reevaluating and looking at it so that we can you know, take a real hard look at ramping that um, back up. I think the next thing that I'm um, sharing with everybody is you need to be communicating to your list, that group of people that know you like you trust you, your database. Um, you need to stay in touch with them. If you've been watching me at all online, when this happened, I thought to myself, look, son, I need to do, I need to be out there and, and just uh, be helpful, informative, and somewhat reassuring um, to not just my members. I mean, I'm always there for people in top practices. We're, we're connected all the time. But this went out to everyone I can possibly, my, my large reach 
um, both in my own database, which is you know well over a third of the profession, and um, um, which you know I built doctor at a time, and then uh, the social media, and just just you know be there and be helpful. You can do that with your patients right now. Uh, you know, simple videos, and I'll tell you, nothing's more important. So, you know, I often do videos, and I set up a green screen, and I do it. You know, I have a professional way to go about that. Um, but I, I, so what I did was I sat down, I wrote 30 uh, uh, video titles that I wanted to shoot, and um, and then I set up my simple camera right here in my office, right in front of my wall of things that I uh, that are things out of my life, and I just instead of a green screen, which was you know, highly produced, I just started shooting videos and my hair continued to grow as I was doing that. I got some pretty positive feedback, by the way, about I look younger with longer hair, people tell me. I hope that's true. But and then I, I, I you know, had them all uh, edited and sent out. And you've seen, you know, a, a lot more presence from me. Your patients need to see that, too. Melissa has been particularly good at that, um, where she's been doing not just one video about what we're doing to take care of you and making sure you're healthy, but multiple videos. You really want to go take a look at her website, but then view all of their social media, all their videos, and don't get intimidated because they are ridiculously good and they are having way too much fun. In fact, I even said to Melissa, maybe you guys are having a little too much fun um, because they produced, you know, her, her marketer has really high quality video production skills. Her husband's a ridiculously talented singer and um, they've done some fun, fun stuff. But they're also, her and Dr. Rizvi are, you know, simply saying, we're here, this is what we're doing. And they've done that multiple times. Uh, and so um, reach out that way. This, the other thing that you can do is remember that, you know, the, the marketplace is changing now. And um, so your, your, um, uh, your mix inside your, I always hate to call it competitive because, first of all, other podiatrists, are not your competitors. Um, they are a rising tide floats all boat. What's good for all one podiatrist is good for all podiatrists. What your comp competition is is Walmart and stupidity, really. But your your um, your market's going to change, uh, and so there are there are um, a number of places that people used to go for their lower extremity care that aren't going to be there or are going to have been in a lot of disarray, and so you're going to see. Uh, that um, you will, this is going to happen. You're going to see a surge in um, in all kinds of cases. And you want to start to really think about what kind of a practice mix, which we talked about before, um, you want to have. But here's what I want you to do. Take your reviews online seriously. There is really nothing. I mean, you have to have a great website. You need to take care of your list and communicate to it, uh, as these doctors do. But you want to make sure that when people are saying, I got to go find a doctor, a foot doctor, that when they go online, they see five-star reviews from happy, happy patients. So that starts with making sure that you provide that level of care. Your staff customer service is just beyond good. Uh, and then and you, take, you, you don't have patients. You have raving fans. And then ask them, do you ever review anybody online? Would you be willing to do that with us? And I don't want to go into a big, long, uh, I've already spoken too long, um, but there's a process that you can go through to do that. Um, but it starts with just asking. And so those are really what we're at. I mean, it's back to the fundamentals. Market your practice, manage it well, and this is all going to work out very strongly in our favor. I mean, I've been, you saw, I, I, I rebranded in the beginning of this year, top practices, um, you know, top practices, the home for private practice because I really feel like private practices have felt like they've just been under siege. And I'm telling you, as we come out of all of this, private practice is looking an awful lot better to an awful lot of people. Um, but you need to be strong and you need to do the things that prepare you for the next thing that's going to come. I hope that's helpful. Absolutely, and thank you, Rem, Dr. Lockwood, and Dr. Mullen for your answers to those questions. We are pushing up against the hour here, so that is all the time that we have for tonight. I know there are some unanswered questions out there, so if we didn't get to yours, or if you think of one after tonight's session, you'll receive a follow-up email tomorrow, and that'll have an e email address on it to send your questions and feedback to. As a reminder, all attendees will be sent a copy of the presentation and a link to the recording in the coming days. From everyone here at Cutting Edge Lasers, we want to thank our guest speakers tonight for their time 
and thank all of you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.